Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is Robert Merchak, the former Twin Galaxies chief referee, and um, I'm here with Rudy Ferretti, um, a longtime gamer that I've known since the early 2000s, and we are here to share some of our mutual concerns in the gaming industry right now. Absolutely, um, and uh, just so everybody knows, we had some technical difficulties last week, uh, so when you hear this um, podcast, you're going to be wondering why it took so long, but we just had some issues, but we're going to get right into it. Um, Robert, you know, a lot of people have been asking us, you know, about how we patched it up and stuff, and we both have seen that two different ways. I saw it as, you know, shenanigans and past history aside that we needed to team up because there's so much garbage and 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 um you know corruption and collusion going on behind the scenes in gaming over the last god over a decade and me and you came into this scene well before king of kong and ever since king of kong we've had nothing but trouble come into this scene well there's been a lot going on uh there's been some hot button topics within the last couple of months especially but there's been some long-standing unresolved issues for the last few years and then some even longer outstanding uh, unresolved issues that date back to before we even uh, met in gaming. So we're going to discuss, I guess, working backwards, starting with the most recent issues. Right, exactly. Uh, Jace Hall, you know, when he took over Twin Galaxies, you know, he, he made a lot of bold claims that he could make things happen and make things big, even possibly get us players paid, which me and you always had a difference on. But... Make a long story short, there's a lot of favoritism. He did a right to game campaign and allowed a person named by the William McAvoy, aka Data God, a person that doesn't even game, does not contribute to the scene whatsoever, and basically does a level Z, you know, photography business. Now, it's plausible that he did that photography business for Twin Galaxies and other, um, you know, organizations with, with, you know, gaming events and stuff for Jace and others in exchange for immunity which is really um, quite, you know, disturbing if you think about it. So he can go around harassing people, trolling people, saying nasty things about them. I say one thing about his mom on a third-party site, it gets brought back to Twin Galaxies in seconds, I'm banned. And then my ban doubles, triples, quadruples, and then suddenly I'll be banned for life if I bash them anywhere. And basically I told, you know, Jace Hall to kiss my ass. And, um, well, you know, it's there's, just ridiculous. There's two there's two issues here, and they do need to be separated. Um, there's the issue of, well, Jace, and there's the issues of um, McAvoy, and then there's the issue of the band itself, so three issues. I'd like to talk about the three of them separately. Um, Jace, by himself, um, I agree with a lot of what Jace says and does, but not entirely everything. Uh, I guess no matter who is in charge of TG, um, there's never going to be a complete agreement with their administrative path and pursuit and their direction. So as far as not agreeing with Jace, the few points that immediately come to mind that I don't agree with, to again, keep everything separate, um, one of them has to do with the, the ban itself. Um, I do understand the need to ban gamers. Um, I've been banned myself. I know you have as well right. uh, at some point or another. But for different reasons. But when you have a ban uh, in the current TG policy, the ban applies to both uh, submitting scores and the social media side of Twin Galaxies. I understand a social ban all too well, but a ban on submitting scores, that is something I'm not entirely in agreement with respect to the current policy that Jace has in place. Um, I'm also, uh, and again, I'm not bashing Jace here, but I'm just not in agreement with certain other miscellaneous policies, one of which is the current way that scores are verified and later removed at the behest of the gamer, the submitter, I should say. Uh, you could take a credibility hit if you vote on a score and accept it, and then later the gamer just yanks it if by chance you don't see that the score is yanked because you're a passive supporter of the site, your credibility can just dive without your knowledge simply because a bunch of gamers are not seriously submitting 
a good performance and they just at the drop of a hat decide to rescind it. So I'm not thrilled with the way credibility is handled with respect to score submissions. I'm also not entirely thrilled with the fact that many aspects of the forum were recently removed. Right now, we have no more capacity to discuss matters with each other. And the only real forum we have is in the event that we view our opinions within a score dispute or a score submission, which can basically just take a given topic and divert it, which is not right, or a wall, which basically is lost in the weeds because nobody really can search for wall posts. So well, in those respects, I do disagree with a lot of what Jace does. Robert, you know, you brought up some good points, but I wanted to reiterate on something too. Also, the actions of trolling and looking for quarrels throughout the forums has started on the dispute forums. You have people like William McAvoy and other people that don't like me just for no reason. Not only starting witch hunts of, unlike the other people that we're about to discuss, that have been caught cheating and banned for cheating and more on the way. Yeah. I'm being attacked on purpose because of this person having immunity by Jace Hall. And well, having score challenges, hang on, score challenges and harassment in many forms, throughout the forums, personal, even contacting my personal family. But I get a ban and he just gets away with it scot-free and nobody does anything about it. And then David Hawks had said, there's nothing we can do for outside. Well, then how come I'm banned for outside activity that really wasn't even that bad? Um, this well, is a favoritism issue here. Yeah, to be fair... Um, I have only nominally dealt with um, William on a negative level. Most of the time I deal with him, it's okay. Sometimes things happen that I don't necessarily agree with, but as far as things directly affecting me, I haven't really had the need for animosity towards him. But I do understand the concern that there is a implied, rather not implied, but a perceived quid pro quo where you have gamers donating to an element of Twin Galaxies and then the expectation for that that they might have or what's actually given to them is that they gain something from it other than the donation itself. And by that, if you were to donate to TG's infrastructure or a project that it has or some specific uh, endeavor, that TG is promoting, that in and of itself should not give you special considerations on the website because it's in effect um, not only quid pro quo, but it creates an aura of favoritism. So quite honestly, I wish that there was a more definitive division between the two. If you do donate, don't expect anything to come of it other than maybe seeing your name as gold tier donation, silver tier, etc., You should not expect to get special considerations from TG ownership or TG management or anything for that matter. Well, other than the fact that you've contributed out of your own pocket to the endeavor involved. It, 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 it's, it's gone back. That goes back also way back. And it also goes to present. And if you want to keep it in the present, let's go to this so far. Out of all the challenges that have happened and all the people there have been in trouble, I am still the first person to this day to only have scores removed because of a two, uh, because of an asinine TAS, you know, TG SAP system that was created by Jace Hall to upload directly to TG so they can make money off our scores, create ber uh, certificates that they want us to pay a hundred bucks for, still not do anything for us in return or m make us any money or publicity. It seems like. They want to slave drive us to work for TG, yeah. do all the score adjudications and everything else. And again, the same favoritism is happening with the big three, and they're not a big three by any means. That's Isaiah, Todd, Billy, and others, uh, of course, and Walter, who's the who's the um, the puppet master. Well, to go back to um, when I said we need to separate certain things, the uh, score ban, score removal, etc. One of the things that I definitely don't agree with, I have a strong opinion on this, is when you have a score uploaded to a third party site, whether it's YouTube, Twitch, or some other server, um, the way I understand it is that if that video gets removed without your control, 
or if the site goes to a pay-per-view basis, um, then if not everyone can see your video, even if it's already been adjudicated, the score can actually be removed. So to be honest with you, it is an incredible imposition on the gamers who effectively are contributing to the um, intellectual property of Twin Galaxies by taking the time to upload their performances and submit their scores. And then all of a sudden, for example, uh, let's just say YouTube decides to have an annual fee of $200 a year or you can't see their videos. Why should a video of a performance that's already been adjudicated get yanked or be subject to being challenged simply because a third party changed their annual membership policy? I don't agree with the teaching policy that says that an adjudicated score can be yanked because of that. It, it just is counterproductive and it's extremely frustrating to know that that can happen at any given time. No, it's, 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 a great, it, it's a great point. I mean, something has to be done about that. Like I said, with the favoritism and everything else, and then you've got these score disputes. And now, now people recently are receiving um, life-threatening messages, um, threats, and, and you know, not funny ones by any means. It's, got, it's gotten to me. It's gotten to other gamers. Um, anybody that disagrees with these so-called big three, you know, schnauzers that basically got on their hands and knees, so to speak, for Walter Day and others to get themselves into that ill, disgusting, that needs to be, you know, bulldozed to the ground Hall of Fame, um, is, is becoming a big problem. And we'll start now with Todd Rogers. Uh, now, you and I both t trusted Todd Rogers quite a bit back in the day, and, and, and we used to talk to each other, you and I, back in the old days when I first came into the uh, competitive scene, 0203, and you used to talk about how great Todd Rogers was with Activision and everything else, and yeah. defended him, but then you started bringing up some suspicions, but you never really went full-blown until, of course, yeah. recent years. It, it's worth uh, clearing the air on that. Um, first, I've, I've known Todd for longer than I've known you. Um, Todd first became friends with me back in the late 90s. He started by submitting scores to TG when Corcoran was the referee. And I was just a gamer at that point. And it was only after a bunch of his scores started to reach the Snipercade scoreboard, because 2,600 scores were off the TG database at the time, that I was put in contact with Todd Rogers by Corcoran. And I established a friendship with Todd as a fellow gamer. We were about the same age, which also helped. And um, I did not even think that these scores were bogus at the time. For starters, there was no TG video sharing where you could see what he did. I had to trust that Corker and the TG referee of the era was if he was putting a score up by Todd that it actually happened. And I saw dozens of my scores, if not more, getting relegated from first and second place down a notch because of Todd. Uh, I had to assume that he was a great gamer, so I believed all of his scores. Uh, over time, however, especially once I became a referee, a couple of scores fell under my attention, not because I adjudicated them, but because I saw that they were entered into the database by another referee, probably Corcoran, and the scores were highly questionable for a number of reasons. And while I was a referee, I asked Todd for, uh, and he was, I believe at the time, also a referee by the time I decided to question these scores, I asked him for simple proof to show me. And not even full uh, videos, right, Robert? Right. In one case, a 60 second clip from a Kaboom score claim of 960,001 points on difficulty A, I just asked for the last 60 seconds. And I've asked for that one and a half a dozen others for the better part of several years, both while I was at a referee, while I was a, a senior a chief referee, and then subsequently when I uh, changed my role to senior referee, and I never received any of what I had requested. And as a result, a few scores which I took for granted when they were first entered into the database and later I said, you know, this is just getting out of control. One high score is one thing, but having dozens and dozens of which a few of them are just off the charts, nearly impossible. 
um, I decided to question a few of them, independent of what you would call TGSAP, which didn't exist yet, but independent of any gamer disputing a score or other referee. And I got rebuffed. Um, I didn't enjoy it, but I couldn't just force the guy to send it to me. And we had no mechanism to, at the time, delete all of his scores based on the fact that a private request from a fellow referee wasn't being honored. So I didn't have any power to do that. Um, Corcoran was the referee who most likely saw these performances. And he was, as you well know, and as everyone knows, he was no longer part of TG at a certain point because of some criminal activities and right. he got removed. So as a result of that, there was no corroboration as far as documentation of what Todd did. The only person that could corroborate his own scores was Todd himself. And as a, cur a professional courtesy, I gave him a chance to show me a couple of key moments in his scores. He never did. Unfortunately, they just remain there even through my departure from TG. I've got something I want to talk about too with that because I've known Todd very long as well. You know, not as long as you, but almost as long. And, you know, Todd, Todd, like a regular person, is like a brother. I mean, you could have conversations with him about spiders, his life. You know, fun guy, fun to talk to, always take my phone calls. I'm never, I, agree. I never want to take that away from Todd. Todd's not a bad person as far as the personality goes. But when it came yeah. to business and gaming, he would exaggerate himself to the point of, you know, a supernatural. And, you know, it was cool at first until I started catching on myself. As I progressed and became a better gamer over the course of time and started to become more and more of a veteran gamer myself, I started to see that there were scores that I couldn't do. And I knew I had enough talent to compete with any score out there. And I started saying to myself, you know, maybe something ain't right with some of these scores. You know, for instance, we, uh, and, and we could go in all day with all these scores, but let's just talk about one in particular, two in particular, actually. Um, ironically, Todd Rogers was the champion on Splatterhouse at one time for TurboGrafx-16. And, of course, as you know, the late uh, Wabbit score, which is um, a watered-down effect, which you and I will also get into tonight, um, the watered-down yeah. effect of scores um, of how it's, you're either number one or you're last, or it's all a tie and nobody's better than anybody else, which is crazy. Um, yeah. So, because, you know, because with the TSAP system, everybody sees every fucking thing now. Excuse me. Everybody sees every friggin' thing now. And the problem with that is, you see everything, you know everybody's tactics. Now it's just a matter of, are you talented enough to duplicate what this person did? And now you could lose a score or be tied with somebody within of minutes. So, anyways, yeah. we'll, we'll go back to that. Um, with Todd, Todd would argue with me about Splatterhouse and tell me about how there was a way to keep doing points over and over again without leeching, a legal tactic. I assumed it was the last boss. You discovered, ironically, back in the day when I first became Splatterhouse champion, years and years ago, that we're not going to allow the last boss to be continually used over and over again for 100,000 points. Several gamers tried to change it. Then we found out that stage 6 was the way to go because of either the blue orb, or in this case for TurboGrafx-16, you get what they call cluster screwed, where all the orbs, the, the babies, the, the babies, excuse me, the mother brain babies come out um, all over the screen, and eventually they put you in areas where you can't defend yourself no matter how much you try to leech. So eventually your game ends, and you only get a certain amount of lives. So the rule was changed to that's what you could do to point press. But the problem is... He would sit there, and he had on his own website and our website of Twin Galaxies 999,999,999 points on his own personal site, which he claims he wasn't even part of, but yet the scores are almost identical on Twin Galaxies, except for two or three that I've seen um, are the same of his self-entered scores, and they had 99,999,999 points. Now, you did some calculations. You're an accountant. It's, and you, it's a ridiculously long period of time. Right. It really is. And to be honest with you, when it is looked at objectively, it is leeching. No matter how you look at it, it's leeching. Right. Um, I, I looked into Spirehouse, and as the world champion, current two-time world champion on arcade, three-time world champion on the console, um, I looked into what can be done. There is a way where you could get anywhere from 500 to 1,000 points 
per second, most likely a 500, 500 points a second on a stage four. Problem with that is, now you're no longer progressing in the game. You could stay on level four all day, kind of like space jockey. You'd have to be an idiot to lose. There's a way where you can keep kicking the little uh, ghosts that come out at you. They come out so slow, Robert, that yes, you can keep kicking them. They're worth 500 points a piece. Because that TurboGrafx version, as far as we know, there is no blue orb in stage four for the console version, you could do this infamously. But again, even if Todd, in fact, did leech stage four, you're telling me that he did it for, what was it? Oh, it was an extremely long period of time. Okay, so 400 points a second, 500 points a second, right? So there's 60 seconds in an hour. Six times five is 30, right? So that would be what, 30, what would that be, 300,000 points an hour? Is that well, right? Basically, if he said he has a billion points, right. I'll do the calculation right now. A billion points divided by a thousand points per second. Right. You're talking about a million seconds. You divide that by 60, you got 16,666 minutes. Divide that again by 60. 277 hours. Okay, now let's cut that in half. We're still talking about a hundred and what, 30, 36, uh, 37 somewhat, 38 somewhat hours, right? Well, a lot more than that. Yeah, cut it in half. You're talking about 130, 40, 140 hours. Okay. That's, that's a lot. It's ridiculous. So that would have been his longest marathon in Twin Galaxies in gaming history. It would have made headline news, and he sure as hell would have been questioned for that back then. Yet, yeah. only a marathon that he's showing for that long was Journey Escape for supposedly 85 hours. Now, yeah. the reason I believe Journey Escape more than I would Splatterhouse, because unlike Splatterhouse, all you have to do is sit there and not keep moving, which is like a pause, so I can understand how he could take a break to go, you know, use the bathroom or something like that with a journey escape game. Splatterhouse, you can't do that unless you pause, and well, nobody's going to let you actually, pause. Actually, in journey escape, you really can't go to the bathroom. Oh, okay, I was it's told there's a, no, I was told by Greg Demfire there's a way to stop. Well, if there's a way to stop, uh, it's a, if you're using pause, don't forget, pausing the game by default nullifies the performance. Oh, okay, so either way, whether it's just because you don't move the controller and it stops, or, okay. So then let's forget, so that would be like Music Machine, then marathoning that for 100 hours. Okay, so I get it. Because if you stop using, if you stop moving on Music Machine or Lost Luggage, it doesn't come out until you press the controller again. So it's like a default pause, you know what I'm saying? That I understand. There's a few games like that. Yeah, and that's how, that's how supposedly Journey Escape can work too. But with all that aside, so we just, we just debunked there's no way... No scientific way, because we already know that the body cannot survive more than 11 days without sleep. And we know Todd did not stay awake for 11 uh, friggin' straight days. It's not plausible, it's not possible, and it's also scientifically impossible. And even if he could stay awake for even 3-4 days, you would go into hallucinations and you wouldn't be able to play a video game. So therefore, I just want everybody to understand that I'm not big on science, but I also am not stupid, nor is Robert Merzik. We know that... Right? I mean, after a few days of staying awake, you will start to hallucinate, no matter who you are. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, I stayed awake one time for almost three days. Um, I went to an expo, I went home, and it wasn't really truly awake, Robert. I fell asleep when I got up, but I can tell you, I was dizzy, I had vertigo, I was hearing things, I was having monsters jump up in front of my face. <laughs> like, um, <clears throat> when you watch, like, Nightmare on Elm Street, and somebody's about to fall asleep, and then you see like a picture of Freddy in your face and you're like, you know, it wakes you up, you know. I've had that. I mean, I've been awake for three days before. Yeah. I'm not playing the same game and I was not simply not sleeping. I was doing this, doing that. Right. But at some point after I'd say 80, 85 hours, I started to hear things. I started to imagine hearing conversations that were taking place and there was no one else around. Right. I have to imagine that other people hallucinate differently, but there are limits to when people start to hallucinate. Um, I cannot imagine someone going 100, 140 hours without experiencing some type of uh, dementia or illusionary effects. I also cannot see someone concentrating on the same game for that long and maintaining semblance of uh, you know, sanity 
bother doing it. I have to imagine that that score is just wrong. Yeah, because the, the most we've ever seen on a single life on doing proper leeching, you know, on stage six where you can't do it forever is around 80,000 points. Now, again, on stage four, you probably can do it forever, but the problem is there's no game progression and the game doesn't get no, any harder. Um, and the same would be said in the arcade version without the orb, which maybe there's an area where the orb doesn't come out. The same thing could possibly happen on stage four early on, but I'm not sure. I've never tried that. You know, without, without uh, intentionally diverting the topic, maybe the solution is to completely eliminate the possibility of leeching and just have a one-life-only record on the game. I could do that, and you know me, I'm fine with doing that. As a matter of fact, one time I did one life on that game, and I did well over 200,000 points without even killing the final boss. Um, but that was a, in the combination of getting to stage 6, point-pressing stage 6, and lasting till the orbs came out, but without killing the Mother Brain, and then without killing the final boss. I actually kind of like that idea. I like that you brought that up. Um, but let's go, let's go to game two, okay? So after I argued with him about Splatterhouse, he told me, oh, you know, you're full of, you know, BS, you know, the score's possible. He, he didn't want to hear none of it. It's, and, and that goes back to the next two people we're about to talk about. The same correlation. No videos, no proof. Everybody always has an excuse to not upload the video. He always had an excuse not to get back to me on scores. His van was always broken. His mom and dad were always sick. And I'm not talking about when they were sick. I liked his mom and dad. I want to make that clear. I love Todd like a brother. I was very concerned about his mom and dad, but... I wanted to talk about Wabbit, too. Right, right. But I just want everybody to understand that. I'm not putting down Todd or his family, because people are, 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 you know, stupid sometimes, and they don't listen. The truth is, every day, every moment was an excuse for Todd not entering scores, not getting back to me, not giving me a videotape of something he said he was going to help me with. Now, let's go to Wabbit. This is another game that now he's trying to say he doesn't care about the score and saying it's it's a it's a uh, god darn typo. Okay, it's always an excuse. We've heard this from Billy, we've heard this from Todd, we've heard this from Walter, we've heard this from Isaiah, we hear this from all these cheating gamers. Duncan, all of them. But let's go to Todd first. Wabbit. Somebody did 1,300 points. And with the 1,300 points, I said, okay, well, maybe there's something more to it. You know, we're talking about Todd here. And this was before the whole dragster thing went out down the tubes. So I did 1,300. Then X, Y, and Z did 1,300. And we go back to Todd, and Todd's like, well, maybe it was a different version, or it was a typo. I didn't enter it. The same score is entered on his personal site, which he told other people like Eric Tesler, myself, and several other people that really support him that he never had a site, that somebody created it behind his back. That's a lie I because he was the one who... Well about that. He was the he one... Full well about that site. Exactly. And he told me... Because you gave me that site when we first started talking, when I wanted to be like him. And that's what, that's what made me retire. I wanted to be like all these people, and I found out they're all frauds. It makes me sick. But anyways... So I did Wabbit, everybody else did Wabbit. Now, let's go into something else before we go to the other two losers. Let's go to Todd and now the water down effect of scores of why things have changed with competition. Why, yes, we have more competition now than ever, but the competition's watered down because not only everything is shown, and now anybody can do the same thing. Did you want to start with that? Well... I'm not sure where you wanted to go with that, so I'm going to take your lead on this. One okay, as far the as water down it. effect. If I do a max out score on a game, and nobody else ever did one before, it looks good. Well, Rudy's the only guy who ever do it. Now that my videos are shown, which I understand why we have to do that, because we have cheaters and liars and scam artists everywhere. Um, Patrick was a really good one for that, which we'll get into later. Um, so now I max out a score, my... I get no, no points on my credibility or ESI or whatever, which I think is also total BS. Should have been taken away from Twin Galaxies a long time ago because it's not a true measurement of skill or anything. Um, because, you know, you could just play a thousand games and get just garbage points on them and beat somebody else that doesn't play and be number one overall on the leaderboard. There's even games that have like 400 points just for you playing it because so many people played it because it's a brand new game. Uh... The water down effect is you got 10 people that did Wabbit now, say, and did 1,300 points. We're all on the same level. 
So now we all split the points on that stupid thing for ESI. So you're telling me that's a skill set for that game? If we're all max outs, it should be we're all first place, which we are, and that you know there shouldn't even be an ESI for it, and that's why ESI shouldn't exist because if you get good enough and you can do the same as everybody else, really it's a watered down effect. Well, it just well, ruins it. E ESI, the it's an algorithm, and it's an algorithm based on specific criteria. However, I can tell you that. The ESI algorithm, I'm not going to say it's wrong. It is simply a set of algorithms and choices which people may not agree with. There's a number of ways to determine who the best player is. And I can tell you for a fact, without going into specifics, I think the current method is wrong because I'm the person who's on the top of the TG leaderboard which makes no sense because I am not in the same caliber as dozens of other gamers out there. It's true I have a lot of scores out there in terms of being prolific, but no more than some others. I do have a lot of records, but I think I have 91 records to my name, which is not a lot considering others have hundreds and up. And even so, I seem to be on top of the overall ESI leaderboard. So overall, it makes no sense that I'm on top of a Don Hayes or a Martin Bedard or you or Dwayne Richard or anyone. It just doesn't make any sense. Right, and we're already, we're already um, just so everybody knows, we are already a quarter of a way throughout this interview, you know, this, po this process and podcast. So we're going to move on to... Isaiah and Billy. What do you think, Robert? Billy or Isaiah first? You choose. Let's, let's talk about Billy first because he is the number two of the most recent headline issues with uh, TG and gaming in general. Okay. Um, Todd had his scores yanked basically uh, because of Dragster and a number of other scores which came under fire. Billy had far less scores than Todd, but the thing with Billy is, he may not have been playing on original hardware. And, and pause. found that he didn't. And, found that he didn't. And, yeah, and pause. And I want to make it clear, too, so everybody knows, everybody we're about to discuss, except for Jace Hall, of course, or Grace, is in the Hall of Fame, this ill Hall of Fame that we're going to talk about. And they were handpicked by Walter Day and others. Go ahead. Well, that Hall of Fame... And I, I said it a long time ago, even dating back to the days when I used to get into conflict uh, disagreements with Roy Schilt, who was one of the first gamers to actually push for a Hall of Fame back in the mid-80s. I don't honestly think a Hall of Fame should exist run by anyone inside of gaming because there's a conflict right there. If you look at the International Video Game Hall of Fame, the entity created by TG founder Walter Day, that organization's first run of Hall of Fame inductees was largely quid pro quo. It was a sham. There is someone in there that has a world's record for, uh, sorry, a Hall of Fame inductee for being a record holder on Arcade Tempest at Extreme Settings when the guy only got 114,000 points. There's worse that's than a, that. That's a joke. There's worse There's than people that. that got, they got into the Hall of Fame because they helped Walter right. possibly move some boxes or something. That's right. They're not, they're not even gamers. Eric Akinson got into the Hall of Fame for a hacked version of Turbo Pac-Man or something. He even admitted to me on the phone it was stupid. He's like, but Walter liked me. I'm like, that's the problem, I said right there. Mind you... You may not know her, but Grace Snoke, Ill Grace Snoke, the person who ruined TG when I shut down TG with um, Pete because of the fact that when I was involved and in getting scammed by Grace Snoke and Ryan Sullivan with that score of Nightmare on Elm Street, and then she cooked the books with Guinness. Again, you may not know all the details, but Grace is the secretary of the Hall of Fame. Brian Katie runs part of the Hall of Fame, and Brian Katie was inducted into the Hall of Fame, has no records, has never done anything for gaming, and is in the Hall of Fame. It's quid pro quo. Walter Day, of interest. Walter Day created the Hall of Fame. Okay, now Billy, the guy who he's been carrying for thirty-something plus years up and down the schoolyard, 
okay, and, 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 and putting him number one and promoting him at every event, taking it away from people like me, you, other people, and I'll just mention a few names, Tom Vitava, Matthew Felix, all these big, great gamers that have done many amazing accomplishments, including myself over the years, missing out because it's always been about Todd and Billy, because Todd and Billy have always been on the fence, on their hands and knees, so to speak, for Walter, doing anything and everything he or she says, on top of Billy is also inducted into the Hall of Fame, and he's on the god darn board of directors. If that's not a well, conflict of interest, what is? Well, Billy uh, is on quite a few board of directors. I'm not sure you know the full extent of it. Um, for example, in addition to being on the board of directors of the IVGHOF, he was also a former TG board of directors member. He recently did an interview in his so-called Road to Redemption tour, uh, at some place where he was uh, also a board of directors member. Um, so there's a lot of conflict of interest there with Billy. But as far as what these three guys have in common, most people forget that there was a quite forgettable entity that Walter again created called the League of Legendary Gamers. Ca Ca Council, Council of Legendary Gamers. Along with another called. cheater named Steve Sanders, what? by the way, who was uh, doing pro bono work. Uh, also for that. And uh, going back really quick to the Hall of Fame, though, I wanted to mention, always asking for donations and asking for money for the Hall of Fame and then saying, oh, if you come out, you'll be on a card. If you come out, I could put you on a poster. So in other words, it was all bribery and tips, as somebody else said, which we'll get into here yeah. after you're done with in, your, um, you know, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but. In, in effect, when you are collecting donations for a supposed 501c3 entity, at best, like if you donate to, for instance, uh, the ASPCA, you get a t-shirt or something like that. That's a generic gift of thanks that the organization gives you for your donation. But donating something that promotes the donator, that's quid pro quo. Yep. That's a form of bribery, and that should not be allowed. And the fact that the IVGHOF, a 501c3 organization supposedly, is engaging in this form of bribery that could actually get their 501c3 status revoked. Well, it should. You've got also several other gamers there in there. Another person who bought his way in there, who claims to be this big joust guy, okay, doesn't even have a world record on joust, just rolled machines because he's rich and he can go anywhere. I just want to make this clear to everybody. You got people in there on hacked machines that got in because Walter handpicked them. You've got people that are known to cheat that are still in the Hall of Fame that got in because Walter handpicked them. And even worse than that, you've got favoritism throughout. Anybody and everybody who did anything for Walter got in. Steve Wiebe, are you kidding me? Used the double Donkey Kong board and cheated and he's in? He's in? Seriously? It's well, disgusting. Well, I've been coming out against the IBGHOF on the forums for the longest Nobody time. Nobody should go. Everybody should for cancel. For a number of reasons. Everybody um, should cancel. People, most people don't realize what a sham it truly is. Um, for starters, if you donate money to it, there is no accountability of where that money is going. If you donate a hard part to it, suppose you donate a working asteroids machine, where do you think that machine ends up? There is no museum. It's a, a thought that Walter had dancing in the clouds somewhere, but supposedly that machine is stored somewhere how do you even know it's the same machine that was donated? There is no accountability. There, There is no reconciliation of donations. Like, like I said, I want everybody that's listening to this to not go to the hall, the Ivgoth. It's ill. It's dirty. It's corrupt. Don't go. Cancel your tickets. Cancel your flights if you can. Or if you have to take your flight, go somewhere else. It's not fair to you and your family. You're dealing with a bunch of frauds and a bunch of people that beg for money to go to these events and Walter and other people give them the money or find other ways to give them money and then they don't pay it back. And speaking of not paying people back comes to the next third person who's about to be banned for life and all of his gaming revoked. That was part of CGL, which by the way, Grace also helped run and is no longer in existence. Isaiah, a.k.a. he thinks is named after a game piece. They changed his name legally. He's so, you know, full of himself. Okay, Isaiah Johnson, which a lot of people call Square Johns. This guy, I always knew he was a cheater, but going back, can you believe back in 2007, 2008, he had the nerve to take a child named Andrew Gardigas and shove him up against the wall outside and 
threaten him for being his scorer and 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 harassing him at fun spot which people knew about and nobody did anything about uh, i i heard i got wind of this i didn't physically see it but i was told about this by someone um from that organization and apparently uh isaiah finding out that his score was beat at fun spot chased a gamer into the parking lot physically accosted them launched accusations and that is, forget conduct unbecoming of a gamer, it's practically criminal. Should have been and arrested. somebody that engages in actions like that, how do you take them seriously? Exactly. Well, and that's because he, you know, begged Walter and everybody else, so he, that's what bothers me. These people can do whatever they want and they get favoritism. Blaine Locklear did nothing about it. Kelly did nothing about it. A lot of people knew about what happened. Andrew Gargis even came to me and told me what happened. I never liked Andrew Gargis. I always thought he was full of himself. But as a child back then, I felt really bad for the kid. You know, it, it gets worse. You know, it's been proven. And he's even said it on camera. Did you know this guy travels all over the world with Empire Arcadia and, you know, his, you know, his whole team and everything... All, you know, begging at his side, and he begs, goes and begs people for money, housing, food, and then says he doesn't have to pay them back, and has the nerve to label all people in Brooklyn that they will rob people, beat them down, take their money. That's what we do, he said on his live stream. So in other words, he's saying he doesn't have to pay people back for anything that's ever been given to him, and that he lives off of YouTube and it's okay for him not to have a job, and he doesn't have to prove anything to us about his gaming. Well, I have something to say about that. For starters, I am from Brooklyn, so for him to say that about all people from Brooklyn, that's a big slap in the face because that's not what Brooklyn people are all about. No. Um, second of all, as far as his asking for people for money, I do remember quite vividly there was a point where on his Facebook page he had some type of request to get funded to attend the one of those big bang type events because he said walter asked him to show up and i chimed in i said uh why if you don't have the money to go there why should other people have to pay your way why not just tell walter you want me to be there you pay the ticket and he basically said well walter doesn't have the money so he's you know doesn't want to let walter down and i, I responded and i said well so what? If you don't have the money, you can't go. If I don't have the money to go to an event, I don't go. Exactly. And I have a job. And I have a job. So why do why does everyone else have to subsidize you? He got really pissed off about that, and he basically told me to leave the conversation, <laughs> which I eventually which I eventually did. But the bottom line is is that individuals that are asking for money to fund their gaming activities, whether it's to play games or to attend an event. Uh, a, get a job, and B, if you don't have the money, then don't go. Yeah, well, his thing is he has a YouTube career, so he can't get a regular job. And he rolls his eyes around like he's a liar about everything. And, you know, recently he's being questioned now for leeching and cheating on a game. He said he never leeched. Now he's admitting he leeched. Then he said that he used a different gun in the game. There's videos all over the place, and you can see him threatening people, threatening their lives, screaming and yelling, cursing them out. Worse than I ever did back in even my earlier years, Robert, and I know you can fend for that. You know me very I will, well. I will say this. Um, you and I have had our differences over the years, admittedly, but you are a gamer, a high-profile gamer that I will say, as a matter of fact, you don't cheat. You don't have to cheat. I've never known you to cheat, and you, like, you will never cheat. I can't say the same about Isaiah. Nope. And I've also... Always told everybody, if somebody has a question about my stuff, the videos are available, which you know they're available, and even more so, I have no problem doing something live or doing it again if it's, if it's you know, if it's um, valid to have to do again. Yeah, I, I know there's a lot of gamers out there, Rudy, that, you know, they don't like you for whatever the reason, but as a gamer, you're a stand-up gamer. If somebody beats your score, you will try your best to beat it back if you can, and usually you do. You have no problems with, you know, if people question your score saying, here's how I did it. Uh, you don't need to cheat. You don't have to make up stories about, well, I'm playing with a different board set, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you do what you do and you do it quite well. Right. 
And that's that's why this and again I need to keep reiterating this. One of the reasons, just so the community knows, the reason I retired, it wasn't because, you know, of Texas Chainsaw Massacre going back and forth and losing a battle after Halloween. It wasn't going back and forth and of of how people even were treating me. The reason I left the gaming scene was a combination of all of the above minus the scoring. The fun and the scores were never my problem. I didn't mind losing or winning was fun, and even sometimes it got boring, all the great accomplishments I was doing. What made me leave was finding out that all the people, except for Isaiah, but other people that I looked up to all these years, broke my heart and showed me that they couldn't be honest and that they got money, fortune, and fame, you know, to so some degree over the years over people like me and others, all because they lied their way to the top. And we're going to get more into that as we go along here with the interview as, as we go into more people. But I supported Billy and Todd. Uh, not so much Isaiah because he kind of crossed paths with me for when I was a referee. Uh, so I really didn't have any need to support him. I didn't see his scores for the most part. Right. But for Billy and Todd, I supported their scores for many years. Um, I had to, in Todd's case, compare a lot of my best accomplishments against his. And it was a little bit of a letdown as a gamer to see a score that I thought was great get trounced by a score of his that was 10, 100, 1,000 times higher. It's a little bit of an ego bruising, but it is what it well, is. Well, and I accepted it. Yeah. But to find out that these scores, potentially uh, some of the scores are bogus, that's a bigger letdown. Well, let's go back to Isaiah now since we've already been talking about him. Did you know, you want to talk about corruption and collusion. Walter allowed this. Shame on him, by the way. Lance Hirsch, who really is not even, I'm going to say this in a professional way, is not really even capable of comprehending how to be a referee, let alone was living with Isaiah in a home in New York. Okay, and they're not New Yorkers. I'm from New York. You're from New York. Big difference. They were living in New York together. Lance verified the score. Then he tried to say Walter verified it. I mean, what a conflict of interest. No videos ever surfaced. Then he curses us out, says he has nothing to prove, doesn't have to show anybody, then tells us that after eight cycles, uh, the boss dies, so he pretended he only leached for eight cycles. Then we showed that 42. I mean, everything has been shown, knowing the man that he's been cheating. And then, then it's like he was never leeching, now he's leeching. And now his whole clan is coming out saying that we're bad people, that we're, you know, who the, who the F are we, you know, we'll, we'll get you, blah, blah, blah. What kind of crap is that? To be honest with you, um, it, lead, it goes to show two things. For starters... And all three of them um, are doing the same thing, by the way. Todd, Billy, and Isaiah. Yeah, Lance, um, to be honest with you, um, he should not have been adjudicating and approving um, Isaiah's performance. Or anybody's score. Potential conflict of interest there. But as far as this, this whole leeching thing, uh, again, just like with Splatterhouse, maybe the solution is just a one-life-only game. Right. When leeching becomes too much of an issue. But the fact that showing how he did it keeps on coming up as a stumbling block, again, that's a major red flag over there. Right. And I honestly wish that he's held accountable. He may end up being the third of the big three to get scores yanked at some point down the line should push come to shove and somebody decide to formally launch a score dispute. I also have concerns about his criminal activity in the past and the way he threatens people. Um, you know, I don't, I'm hoping this guy never returns to the U.S. I mean, he's also a disgrace, you know, to his own culture and people. He makes them look bad the way that he's acting. It's, well, it's, it's shameful. Well, I, I prefer not to categorize him like that. That's fine. Honest. I was just but, making a uh, quick point on I that. What I would say is that any threat that's made by him or by his uh, Empire Arcadia group against gamers that would come out towards people that question his scores, that to me, it's, you know, it's a form of cyberbullying. It's, uh, it's, an, it's an overseas threat if they're doing it from where he's currently located. That's another problem. But the fact that they use that thuggish behavior uh, yeah. is a disgrace. And, and it should be frowned uh, upon in TG management if it's actually done through TG's site. They should take note of that and they should hold the gamer accountable. And then the minute, yeah, and 
people should not be engaging in that type of activity. But wait a minute, hold on, it gets worse. What about this? He was tipping and bribing referees to, yeah, to verify his scores? Yeah, I recently scores. got wind of that. And I, I did an interview with someone on the internet recently, a YouTube uh, interviewer yeah. uh, named Tipster, and he brought to my attention that um, Isaiah was tipping. Uh, effectively, he said that it was implied by uh, Twin Galaxies management, and he admits that he was tipping referees to put his scores to the top of the pack, etc. That is a that's basically bribery. There's no other way to put it. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. and Walter and, did that and, too with Joel West and, yeah. and, and Joel West. Any, and, ref you know. any referee that accepted money, I don't care if it was 25 cents, right. that's accepting a bribe. Um, I can tell you for a fact I never did, but uh, as far as uh, being bribed to verify a score, I was paid to go out to Pennsylvania sure. to watch a gamer play right. a performance because I had to buy train fare to get there. Right. I, I, that, I, I that's understand. a different story. Right, but, but I, bribing a referee to put your score to the front of the pack and give it special consideration, that is quite simply, that is well, never something that was implied by teaching. Well, that's no. what a lot of people did. There was a lot of hush money, like with guys like Patrick Scott Patterson. They tried to bribe you. They tried to bribe... Billy Walter tried to bribe Joel well, West, and we'll get into Patterson, that in a few minutes. But Patterson never tried to bribe me. He didn't I try know. to bribe you, but people tried to bribe him, and he took whatever he could. He would even lie for people for scores. He even admitted, well, I needed the money at the time, so I put the score in anyway. That is also quid pro quo right there. It's well, also unethical practice. Of course it is. Um, I, I can only speak to referees that were there while I was at TG, and I'm not going to say that every single referee was a saint, but um, as far as these bribery allegations go, uh, once I left TG in August of 05, August of 05, as chief referee, and I became a senior referee, my role was different. I no longer had to super supervise all the other referees around me. If there was referees misbehaving in that respect, that was a Walter Day issue to resolve. That was not a Robert Winchek issue to resolve. I was responsible for myself once I became senior referee and no one else. I didn't supervise any other referees at that point. So if there were referees engaging in these shenanigans behind the scenes, shame on them. And if Walter Day was aware of it, shame on him. Right. No, for sure. And like I said, we'll go into that in a little while. I just wanted to start introducing that subject about all that money that was being thrown around. And then, of course, Joel West threatening everybody with legal crap. And, of course, Billy and everybody else. So here, here's the next thing. What made you finally lose faith in Twin Galaxies, after all? And what year, approximately, was it? Or was it on several occasions? It was on two major occasions. The first one was when I quit as chief referee in August of 2005. Five, uh, and there was reasons for that. For starters, um, Walter Day promised uh, Twin Galaxies uh, board members at the time a certain stock ownership in Twin Galaxies. And the exact percentages, I remember this quite well. Um, Walter Day had 51%, Billy Mitchell had 12 Corcoran and myself had 10%, Brian King had 10%, that was the board members. Um, Doug McGregor, who was one of Walter's Iowa-based uh, friends and programmers, got 5%, and Mark Longridge had 2%. He was a long-standing TG referee and a MAME editor and referee. So adding all that up, it's 100. When it came to August of 05, there was a conference call, which Brian King and I had, and supposedly Walter and Billy were going to attend, and Billy never actually bothered to show up. Although he brokered the call, he started it and he just let it wait there for others to join in. So Brian and I are waiting for Walter for, for 45 minutes. He finally joins in. And during that call, we found out a couple of things. Before the call, I did an investigation using my company's Hoovers.com site, which I was given permission to use to look up Twin Galaxies as a business to find out ownership information. And when I downloaded that information, this is before August of 05, I found out that the ownership listed in Hoovers.com was not Brian King, Robert Merchek, etc., etc. 
It was Walter and Billy and a number of other people, one of which was John Block, a name from Walter's first book of records, and other names I did not recognize. There was no mention of me at all, or Brian. Mm -hmm. There was other Twin Galaxies entities which I did not even know existed, one of which was a Twin Galaxies playing card company. Walter tells Brian King and I, when he finally joined into the call, that he simply didn't update the information yet with the IRS, which was Yeah, wrong. sure he didn't. He also, he also told Brian King and I that we did not have 10% of shares. He told us we had 10% of the remaining shares. Mm -hmm. And we told him, well, Walter, if we do that, then it's not going to add up to 100%. Where's the rest of the shares? And Walter goes, oh, well, I guess I have those. He says in his heart, that's what he meant, even though on paper he told us otherwise. So basically, Walter is a snake oil salesman. Yeah, And the second disgusting. thing is, during that interview where I completely lost faith and quit TG over it, all the things that we asked of Walter, he shot down. All the revenue-generating ideas, he shot down. Same thing he did with we, me over the years. We had asked Walter for a TG plan of contingency because we told him we have a concern. What happens being that you're 60 years old or so if you have a major health issue? And as you know, Walter Day is not in the best of health. Mm. He's a very frail person. Yep. He's on a special diet. And quite honestly, he's always flying off to India for whatever the reason to meditate. He's, he's not in the best of health. So Brian and I wanted to know, well, what happens in the event of a disaster? How is their continuation with TG? Walter didn't want to get into that at all. Um, he wanted to control all the purse strings and all the uh, business strings. Right. And we also asked him for a um, balance sheet because Walter had for a long time wanted us to become paid salary members, even if it was just a dollar a year, for the purpose of us being on paper as you know, compensated members of TG. But we were afraid of doing that because without seeing a balance sheet of what TG actually owes, as well as what taxes TG paid, etc., how can we commit to something like that? So Walter basically rebuffed us across the board. And between that and finding out that TG was not uh, showing us as owners the way Walter promised, I quit as chief referee at that point. That was the first time I lost faith in TG. And the second time I lost faith was later on when I rejoined in September as a reduced role of senior referee was around the time that I quit in December of 06. Walter was giving me zero support in the split of the Atari 2600 platform. And I was dealing with flack like never before from internet troll Scott Stofan. Walter was forcing me to adjudicate and accept the performance by Steve Weeb based on the so-called totality of the performance. Yeah, and screwing Tim Zerby out of uh, fame and fortune, which is a fact. Well, even though um, Steve Weeb's performance went against the stated TG rules on continuity of performance, so Walter was forcing me to accept a score that I refused to. And the third reason was Roy Schilt, after years of refusing to give information about his Missile Command Marathon score, and after years of basically getting debunked about his uh, tournament setting score, we decided the board of referees that remained, the hell with them, and his scores are coming down, and I took them down myself. And Walter demanded that I put them back up, yeah. and I told him, I will not put that up. If you want me to put it up again, I will quit. And Walter told me to put it back up. So that very same day or evening, I quit teaching on December 19th of 06. Mm -hmm. I just got so fed up with it. Well, Todd said you were forced to resign. Now, I know you both self erred scores. Tell That's us a little bullshit. bit about that. That's, well, the stars that Todd said that he's lying through his teeth. Nobody forced me to resign. I resigned on my own free will. Um, I resigned on December 19th of 06. I rescinded all of my security access with the exception of the account itself, which only Brian King as administrator could remove. Um, I turned over all score digital materials to Kelly Fluin and Brian King within 24 hours after that. And I asked Walter for eight straight months to pick up the hard copy documentation, which he never did, and which I ended up having Brian Koo drive out to New Hampshire to get to Sean Cramp. But I resigned. I was not asked to resign. I was not uh, fired or anything like that. I resigned on my own accord. If Todd said anything but at any point, 
he's lying. What what does this thing about both you uh, self entering scores and the difference between the two? Well, there's a truth to self entry of scores. Prior to around 2004 and post 2001, there was a version of the Tichy database after Walter won his lawsuit with that billionaire investor and a new Perl-based system was designed which allowed referees for the first time to enter new titles, tracks, and scores. There was a period where a referee could log into the database and create a new title, a new track, and enter a score, even if it was their own. There was a limited number of referees. You can count them on two hands. There was not that many. And in the early point of that, there was only about five. But eventually there was around 10 or 12 or so, and some were entering scores and some entered their own. It was unfortunately a period of trust. I don't want to say it was completely naive, but there was a period of trust because TG was grassroots. Assumedly, the people that were working for TG were trustworthy and um, honorable uh, in terms of entering their own scores. But as it turns out, that trust went out the window when one or more referees did self-enter inflated versions of their scores, or in some cases, potentially a score they never even did. Gotcha. Um, so when you entered scores, why did you enter scores and why did Todd enter scores? Well, for starters, I entered scores for hundreds and hundreds of gamers. Um, the reason I had to enter my own scores uh, was it was several reasons. For starters, my own scores that were entered for, uh, were created back in 2001 during the summer console competitions of 01, which I ran along with about two or three other referees. I had close to 270 scores plus, which never made it into the TG database because. Nobody, none of my fellow referees wanted the burden of watching over a hundred of my videotapes right. with all these various performances. Um, when the TG database was finally created by Brian King and allowed us to enter scores, uh, as opposed to just simply uploading them, I didn't want to be left out. So quite honestly, I, I entered my scores relating to the summer competitions of 2001. When, Corker, when uh, Mark Longridge quit as main referee, I had to personally format and import the main scores into the TG database, inclusive of my own. And there was also a huge backlog of main scores that Mark Longridge refused to um, log because he had a very rigid stance on what scores or rather titles were worthy of being included in TG. But either were, way, either way, what you did, you admit was wrong and it could, well, it could not, bite you. I'm not going yeah. to say it was wrong. At the time, it was perfectly acceptable, but unfortunately, it gives the illusion of impropriety. Like again, Mark Longridge was not accepting uh, for, he was accepting their scores, but he wasn't watching them on nominal titles on main, which basically means that a gamer took the effort of creating a score, Mark refused to enter the score into the database. And the problem back then is that the TG database was designed in such a way that the rules associated with the variation would not be visible to the gaming community yeah. unless at least one score and, was entered. And, and that's, what, so, that's, what, that's what upsets me about the whole that's what, that's what I scores. Do, yeah, that's what I had to do with uploading my main scores with the inaugural scores so that other gamers could see here are the rules. Now, and my main scores were not out of control unreasonably high. They were very, very modest. Right, your, your scores were modest. Now Todd, however, was claiming because the tape's lost, but now that we go back in time and know what we know today, if we would have known back then, he would have been in a lot of trouble. We know that a lot of the scores he entered were basically gassed head scores, scores that we know that are either impossible or the numbers can't be done with the add-up, of, co of, of course, with the game being played of the way that the point structure is set. Well, so we don't need to... Some scores he entered and some scores Corker had entered, and I still don't Either understand way. how Corker had entered some of these scores because okay. the question comes, did he even watch them? 
Why should he be on receipt of the tapes? Either way. There's no way to know at this point. We know he didn't play all these TurboGrafx 16 games for 100 hours apiece. Nobody has that kind of time. Um, let's go into, um, you know, uh, we have some questions for you. Um, Team Metroid in Brazil and Rodrigo Lopez. Now, I'm going to say this straight up. I've seen in the private archives and referee archives that I'm not supposed to see because Ill Jace, of course, left it unlocked for me and the whole world to see. That's on him. I've seen Rodrigo Lopez admit to cheating. Did you know at any time that T Team Metroid and Rodrigo were, were cheating? Did you think that they were ever dishonest with their scores? Were any of them questioned over the years that you can recall? To be honest with you, I first met them back in the summer of 2001 towards the tail end of the summer console competitions event. Um, I've been dealing with them over the years. Um, they gave great scores and I've watched their performances and they didn't show me anything that was impossible to do. It's just they had a great talent to pull off scores. But when it came to um, a score that Rodrigo cranked out on Pitfall for the 2600, he turned in a score which was called Perfect Pitfall. It was where you finished the game on one life. Right. And the goal is how much time is remaining. And he had a minute and 48 remaining. Right. And a uh, certain internet troll named Scott Stilfen, who is to this day, 14 years later, harassing me over this, he was complaining that Rodrigo uh, did not play on NTSC Original. He played on an emulator, etc. I think he did too. Um, well, I will tell you this, and this is something that's not well known. Rodrigo's 2600, I physically sent him my 2600 game. I mailed it to him. The game, the console, everything. I mailed him a bunch of cartridges. Right. I gave it to him as a gift. Now, if he played the 2600 on an emulator and others are saying that the time remaining is not possible, subsequent performances by either Rodrigo or other gamers did prove that a minute 48 is possible even on an NTSC original. So I never um, understood for starters, why there was such a big issue okay. for the 2600 platform about someone doing emulator versus NTS or original because dating back to the 90s when Corcoran was running the Sniper K database for the 2600, the scores were commingled and nobody really okay. cared. So again, you don't have any knowledge or proof or anything you can remember that Rodrigo Lopez or anybody from Team Metroid was caught cheating or admitted to cheating that's not, the question not for me not for me okay because any scores that i verified for them they look fine okay but uh, i'm not the only referee that verified their scores okay i want to i want to talk about something else about self-entering and conflict of interest this is why more people need to be removed from the database now besides rodrigo lopez admitting in the private archives to cheating who's not been removed which i think eventually he will be removed and maybe jace and david hawkset will take their heads out of their butts after this and do something about it now that it's public also in the private archives um you know i've seen stuff from all of you refs you know talking bad about me we're not going to mention about oh. you because it was a different time it's fine but i'm just letting you know Former refs, don't right. forget. Former, former, refs. former refs, okay, talking ill about me, planning, um, you know, a chain reaction to go after my scores personally as a conflict of interest when I was banned and whatnot, and to do it purposely or not enter scores and tamper with the database. The biggest one of all was where I saw private conversations between Patrick Scott Patterson and his wife talking about self-entering scores for each other, creating fictitious characters, and of course self-entering their own scores. Now, he tried to say, well, that couldn't be done when he came on board, but here's the lie about that. Yeah, maybe you couldn't enter your own score as a referee, but living in the same apartment, do they really think that we're that stupid as gamers to not realize, oh, hey, honey, here's my password. Okay, honey, here's my password. It's a very simple term to describe that. It's called collusion. Correct, okay. So that's two more people that need to be yanked from the database and also all their scores removed because it's also corruption and collusion. Also, in the private archives, hang on, in the private... On top of that. Don't forget. What's that? They're not the only, they're not the only ones. I'm not done. Uh, yeah, I'm not done. When, when Patrick was caught on several occasions, even before Blaine Locklear made him a referee, he was caught cheating on games using extra lives, 
secrets and stuff that you're not supposed to use in games, like codes and stuff, and then kept saying it was a mistake. And several referees, former referees, said, oh, well, the first one might have been a mistake, but all these games, you know, this is disgusting. I mean, the stuff that I saw in the archives is just disgusting, and then changing the rule settings on my games around the, the days of my birthday or the same day when I would submit them, and these people never submitted before, submitted afterwards, don't even have real accounts. That's a big problem for me. Also, the other collusion, Morning Dove and Todd living together or cohabiting together, self-entering their own scores, and of course, entering scores for each other, and last but not least, Kelly and April P. Simmons. And if there's any more, yeah. please let me know. Those are the ones that I am most familiar with. I really did not enjoy the fact that um, I found out after I left uh, TG that Todd and Morning Dove were both referees. I, I still to this day cannot understand what her qualifications as a referee were. Exactly. I, I just I don't get that at all. Frostbite Patterson, Freddy. That's what I was yeah. told. Patterson, he came on board after I left. Uh, the reason being that you said Blaine, Ma Blaine appointed him. Blaine was not appointed until after I left as well. And Blaine is another referee. I know Blaine appointed him. I saw it in the private archives. Well, Blaine is a referee that, quite honestly, should have never been a TG staffer in the first place. No, he shouldn't have. Blaine, um, for people who don't know this, Blaine submitted three scores to me, all of which were rejected because he did not follow submission uh, protocols. Right. And for spite, he created his own website, which he ran, right. which largely reflected scores that he and his college buddies did and some of his family members. Uh, the only gamer outside of that that ever submitted a single score to it was Don Hayes submitted one score and one score only. But Blaine, based on his sites being set up and convincing Walter he had some expertise, Walter gave him a shot at being part of TG after I left. How he got to be chief referee, I have no fucking idea. My heart, my French. But uh, Blaine is the last person that should have been a chief referee. Exactly. Even, um, and then on top of that, he appointed Patterson. Right. Patterson with no experience, no knowledge of video games whatsoever. By the way, if anybody doesn't know, I've said this before, Patterson's on also KOLV, ripping people off, burning people's machines, ripping people off of money, does the same thing on eBay, does it also in his private life. Everything that he fails with, he jumps into something else. And then when he got caught with his, his horrible gaming uh, talents, he also you know decided to get out of that, and now he does other things. I want to talk to you, though, about something very, very, very important, and this involves Richie Knuckles, Joel West, and all of the above. No matter what they say, we know the truth. So when Joel tried to give you hush money, the terms were kind of vague. Do you have any suspicions well, on particular well, of what they were trying to do and be keeping well, for quiet starters, about? For starters, Joel wasn't trying to give hush money. He was writing on behalf of Walter. Who was trying to give me hush Well, that's the same difference. He's still in, he's still in cahoots with Walter. Therefore, yeah. he was manipulating Walter. So go ahead. Well, what he did, he sent me a legal missive, and I think I might have even shared that with you. You sure Probably. did. He sends me a missive, and he basically says Walter wants to make amends to his promises from yesteryear. And he says Walter is willing to cut a check, providing you sign this, and you have to sign this NDA, and the NDA had a provision where you could not speak against TG, Walter, or Billy for a period of 10 years. You do not know what the amount is going to be yet for this first check. There may be further checks, and if so, he does not know if or when they will come or what the amount is. So, does he, does he actually... So, so the fucking check could have been for a penny. The check could have... check for one cent? Is he out of his mind? How stupid does he think people can be? Right, you will not know what the amount is. That's like when you go to, like, um... Edder and Pennoster, you know, and they do a legit settlement, but the problem is the settlement was for so many hundreds of thousands of people, your settlement check is like two pennies, you know? You know, it's like those old ads, if you remember from years ago in the newspapers and the comics and their classifieds. Send five dollars in and we'll tell you how to make a lot of money. You do that, they're going to give you a photocopy of the very same ad that says, here's how you make five dollars. Just post this in a newspaper and you'll make a lot of money. So basically you get burned. Yeah. I mean, Joel West thought that we were idiots. Right. And I'm told that I am the only 
person that this was sent to out of what I heard was 17 or 18 people, I'm the only one that did not sign this. Which is why all these years after Joel sent that, I'm still free on the forums and elsewhere. If I want to speak out against Walter, Billy, or TG, I'm free to do so. Right. And if anybody this ever wants to... This also explains why other people right. have not spoken out against Walter, Billy, and TG because they can't. They were given hush money effectively. Right. Um, also, uh, so with that, so that's your, your response on that. By the way, Let's talk about Richie Knuckles. I mean, he's in cahoots with all these people. He promotes all these people. He basically gets on his hands and knees for all these people and does anything that they want to get to become part of this whole gaming thing. And what's really sad is that even after they were all caught, he claims that we're all stupid and dumb and that these people are good people and defends them like no tomorrow. And then on top of it, will not allow notable people like me to go to, you know, to uh, events and stuff all because I said stuff about them. Richie, quite honestly, it's, it's not the old expression, birds of a feather. Richie and Walter, it was almost inevitable that they would meet up, partner up, and Richie would be in coach with Walter and Billy. Um, Richie, from day one that I met him, he, pro he came to uh, Fun Spot during one of my vacations. Not many people know this. And he was simply an attendee at Fun Spot. And I gave him, uh, as a courtesy, I was a TG staffer at the time. I gave him um, a tour of what Fun Spot looked like. And I happened to, at one point, I pointed out to him a NARC machine, which was the actual game of the name, it was an arcade machine. And I mentioned to him something that Randy Lawton, who was the TG's chief technical person, said to me right. about how that machine was out because it needed a CGA monitor. And throughout that tour, that was pretty much the only thing I mentioned from a technical point of view to Richie. But after the tour and after Richie sent, submitted some scores, he bashed me on the internet saying that I didn't know what the hell I was talking about, even though I was just repeating verbatim what I was told by someone that I assume did. Um, he bashed me for saying his scores were never entered when in fact I, de I delegated the scores to other referees to enter at that point. Um, and basically from that point on, Richie he had it in for me. At some point, he even went on his uh, podcast show years later. He made fun of me on a regular basis by sitting in a hollowed out Star Wars machine just, just to get one little dig in with me, you know, in each and every opportunity. Richie just fits in very well with Walter and Billy. He has a film about himself called The King of Arcades. I know, it's ridiculous. It's supposed to show what his ego is. It is. Who the hell makes a, a movie about themselves? I, I love how people bash me for never winning a tournament. Still the greatest gamer of all time to never win a tournament, just like many other legends in sports never win a tournament, but they're a great player. Make a long story short, I love how this idiot goes on his wall the other day and says, Eat that, RJF. I just won a PS4 tournament. Against who? A bunch of young, incompetent millennials that are just casual gamers? Like, who did he play? Like, what is this, like the NCAA tournament where the 64th place team plays number the number one seed? I mean, come on, dude. Give me a break. Well, Richie is, he has his own agenda in gaming. Um, I don't contact him anymore. I don't deal with him anymore. But Richie is, he has his own little crew. His personal crew in gaming uh, has a bit of an unsavory element to it. Um, he has in the past demonstrated how he can come out against on the forum with um, hypothetical and false tirades launched against people. I remember he made uh, up stories about Eric Howard and a female guest a long time ago who stayed in his home during one um, event. Uh, so Richie is just personally not to be trusted. Exactly. It's all about money for him. Any kind of amount of money will make him shut up. He really tries to lie. Even though all these people cheated, he still defends them. And I told him, you're sick for doing so. I said, if you bail, I said, and everybody keeps saying, well, what he's trying to do, what he's trying to do. Like somebody said that me and him had an argument and it was admissible. I told him his mother was admissible, not Richie, but the other guy. Make a long story short. Richie had the nerve to try to say, yeah, well, what I'm trying to do and everybody's screwing it up. Richie's been trying to do for the last 16 years. And you know why Richie doesn't do Richie and can't get anywhere Richie? Because Richie is with the wrong 
low-life, lying, trash people in gaming that have ruined gaming for everybody. That's why Richie doesn't get anywhere, but Richie doesn't get it. Richie thinks that he's staying with these people and, 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 and getting on his hands and knees for them or helping him, when in fact, it's only hurting him. And it's been proven in the private archives, just like with Patrick Scott Patterson, not only the cheating, but also trying to get a Donkey Kong score to be approved with no video, which he never did, obviously, you know, Patrick, you know, and Patrick will deny all this and go on his wall and cry about it later. It's all there. And I'm going to, in a closing statement later, I'm going to talk about that, how I feel about TG and what they should do, or I want something else to be done. But what, what are you feeling so far? And where do you think that we should go with this for the rest of the audience? Because now we, um, we've covered a lot of material and we've done really well here. Well, as far you know, we covered some of the uh, more modern issues, the Billy, Walter, uh, Todd, Isaiah issue. We went into some of the older issues. Um, we discussed you know, certain elements of TG right now that I personally don't agree with that impact both of us, and potentially they're going to impact me at some point. Uh, that's the um, score dispute system and the ban system. Um, I'm at risk of having my scores banned at some point because of some policy that is in place, which um, you know one of my older scores can come under fire. Uh, I have a lot of scores submitted to Corcoran when he was a referee that now that Corker is gone and the tapes are actually gone, I don't know what's going to happen with those scores long term. I, I, um, yeah. Scores I, of mine from fun spot events, you know, they, they were done at events, you know, where's the proof of that? Um, scores of mine that were done on videotape, which I sent out to um, Sean Cram years ago, back in 2007, November. Um, to my knowledge, those tapes were never watched by anyone. And there was over a hundred, easily over a hundred tapes for me alone right. in that batch. Where they are, God only knows. So, yeah, I, I'm in jeopardy of having scores removed because somebody's got a bug up their butt about me. And someone, in fact, actually tried to do that recently. And, Dave yeah. Gamer tried to challenge a score of mine on Journey Escape for 2600 of <coughs> 2 million points, even with the record of 100 million. And challenging my two million point record, not because of the score that I got, but because of a comment that I made on another person's uh, score dispute. Right, and then which is ridiculous. Exactly, and every, uh, that's the first time a score dispute was launched against a gamer because of a comment they made. I mean, that's how out of control it got. The score dispute that the gamer made against me was shot down, but the fact is, it was allowed to be launched in the first place. Yeah, no, exactly, and like I said, you know. Um, you got the money beggars, you got everybody claiming they have no money. Notice, too, not only do they all have in common, Billy, Isaiah, and, and, and Todd, no videos to show for their proof of anything. Did you notice everybody's always broke in this scene also that's all favoritism? Richie always says he has no money, but then brags how well he's doing. Isaiah has no money, brags about how well he's doing. Billy always getting stuff for free. Joel always getting free rides for free. You know, when does it end? What, 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 what do you have to do to get ahead? Truth be told, chances are you can't lump Billy into that group because Billy's got money. Well, he's he got money, Walter. but the truth is he's been carried by Walter because of the money he gave. Either way, there's money exchanging one way or another, well, begging one it, way or another. It, it's an unfortunate quid pro quo, and I noticed this early on when I was a referee. I noticed that Walter, to the mutual extent of everyone else who so many scores, Walter was only promoting Billy. It didn't matter that we had, at the time, back in 2001, 2002, we had gamers that were setting world records on one, two, three, four, five arcade titles and more. Walter primarily promoted Billy Mitchell. Well, we had console gamers, new console gamers coming out, submitting great scores, yourself included. We had gamers submitting great scores on arcade, MAME, and other systems. And yet it was always Billy, 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 Billy. That's my oh. point. And that's what I got mad at, King of Kong, Kong off too. I said, write to the news and write to those idiots, Billy and, 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 and Richie and Walter. I said, it can't always be about Billy and Steve. It has to be about Rudy and other people. All I kept hearing was, well, you don't play popular games. I said, Splatterhouse oh. is one of the most popular games of all time. I said, and all my other scores for console. Well, nobody cares about consoles. But then when other people do consoles, if it was a Billy or, you know, somebody that Walter got his you know, ding-a-ling, you know, on his hands and knees for. Anybody that, you know, did for him, 
they would get the publicity. But if Rudy well, think did... About, think but, about what Walter said in King of Cub when they were talking about Billy getting a perfect Pac-Man. Right. Walter right. said, it's not that someone got a perfect Pac-Man, it's that Billy Mitchell got a perfect Pac-Man. Exactly, Pac and that pisses me off because it's like, look at all the amazing things I've done over the years, and this is why I qualify my console player of the century now, because of Todd and Billy finally being shown that they're frauds. Listen... Collectively, I've done much more than most classic gamers. Now, there's other classic gamers that have done a little bit more, a little bit less. I put myself up there with Tabataba Taba because I've beaten him on games, he's beaten me on games. Granted, he's done some bigger titles, but we have a lot of similarities. So we'll just say he's like, you know, the Michael Jordan and I'm a little bit less. But I, I put myself ahead because of the fact that I've been around longer now and I've been going. What bothers me is that people don't acknowledge that I come out like Muhammad Ali, I'll say I'll do something on a certain night, a certain moment, a certain hour, and it gets completely ignored. When does Billy ever do that? When did Todd ever do that? Never. I Well the, ironically, you know Billy did Billy did that once, but once, so oh, wow. He was but he was likely cheated. Do you remember And paid to do it. Yeah. Do you remember when Billy did that um, Donkey Kong Donkey Kong Junior back to back world record attempt? No, I don't. Billy, uh, in one of the performances that was challenged as being done on not original hardware, Billy showed up at some event, set a world's record on Donkey Kong, and they made a big production saying, oh, there's something else I gotta do. And he had a board swapped on camera, even though it was found to be a fake board swap. And he played Donkey Kong Jr. and he set another world's record. But both of those performances were found to be fake. Because mm -hmm. Billy had said years ago, way back in 2000, that he wanted to do some great event that no one ever did before in the history of gaming, and he built it up to some holy grail type level accomplishment. And then Steve Weeby came along and became the first million points on Donkey Kong Jr. and on Donkey Kong. And Billy, basically what you know, he wanted to do was his thunder was stolen. So Billy made a big production about doing this, uh, doing both games back to back. He cheated doing it. So that, that's one of the problems I, that we have over here. Well, yeah, but here's what bothers me more than anything, okay? This is why I gave myself Console Player of the Century, and I'm, I'm going to just go down the list really quick of what I can even remember. There's so many things I've done. I played a Nintendo game. I looped it 29 times. It was the most ever on a single regular video game. Even Tom Bataba said that was crazy that I did that, and that was on Target Renegade for the Nintendo. 29 loops, okay, on one life. I hit the most three-pointers ever in any basketball game, whether it be arcade, modern console, or classic console. I came back from a 140-point deficit on a basketball game, which I programmed the computer to take a 140 to nothing lead, but it doesn't matter. I admitted that because in the rules, you're allowed to program the computer uh, playbook. So I did. I let them take a 140-point lead. Mind you, I did that with the worst team in the league that, that took the 140 to zero and had to come back with the best team. And I did it in exactly three periods to do it. It was not easy. That went under underlooked. I used to hold the biggest, largest margin of victory over the computer in, in, in um, sports. You know, I, I've held records for well over a decade, three different ones so far. Um, a bunch of popular titles on a bunch of different consoles. All that stuff gets overlooked because it's Rudy. They say it's baby games. It doesn't matter if it's popular or not. They just make up stories as they go along. Like William McAvoy always tries to say, what accomplishments have you done comparing me to a retarded boxer? It's stupid. These are the reasons I retired. What do I have left to prove? I've done it all. I've done the max outs. I've done the perfect scores, low scores, high scores. You know, And other people have too. I'm just making a point. Does that make sense? It, no, I, I, I get overlooked by everything that I do. I could get Tetris tomorrow and it won't matter. I think nowadays, unfortunately, and uh, again, this is my own perspective, I believe that unless you play an extremely high-profile title, you tend to get overlooked and overshadowed. You might get written up in a TG front page article by getting a world's record on a less popular title. That's always possible. But the talk of the town tends to revolve around okay. Donkey Kong I, record. I, I, I've done track and field. I, 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 like yeah, that. but I've done track and field. I've done, I've done Double Dragon 2. These are all popular games. These are all top sellers. I've done DuckTales. I've done... Dude, I, I, I could, I've done it. I've done them all. Yes. But remember, um, there are those out there who, unless you do a Donkey Kong, or a Miss Pac-Man, or a Galaga, they don't want to know you. 
on the console side, unless you get a world's record on Super Mario Brothers, they don't want to know you. It's not true. Because, because look, there's been people with favoritism that have done horrible games, like the horrible games I play, and they get the recognition and I don't. So that's not true. That's why I'm bringing this up. Well, that's why I say it's a perception. And it shouldn't, be, no, it shouldn't be about what title you play. If I have the most perfect scores on a friggin' entire console, making me the NES god, that should be notarized. It's not like Todd, where he faked his scores, my max outs are real, and the videos are out there to prove it. The amusing thing that you mentioned about you know, Todd and going back to Billy, they're gone now from the TG site. But when you look at, ironically, the IBGHRF site, yeah. it still has on there yeah. Billy is being player of the century. When you look at Billy Mitchell's Twitter feed, it still yep. lists him as player of the century. Oh, I know. I got idiots yeah. listing themselves as Spirehouse champions, too, that I beat years ago. He, he will never take that away from himself because in Billy's eyes, he actually is the player of the century. Even in light of the fact that there's people that have done hundreds of more scores than he has. Yeah, well that's just dumb. So let's go to um, one of our last topics and then we can just go on a tangent of whatever you want to talk about. Let's go to uh, Cat Despira. Multiple, literally multiple, multiple personalities. Person who claimed she was here for the scene then didn't care about anything but herself. Then she said it was all about both sides. She had to be on both sides of the coin. She had to defend both people. Then said that we all harassed her, stalked her, threatened her. Later to find out that she started stealing pictures off the internet, pretending it wasn't her, saying that I did it, you did this, she did that, he did this. Cat Despira, I mean, still to this day, Still to this day, bashes people, our president, talks oh. about death threats, uh, death to gamers, G gamers are bad, um, twists things that we said. What do well, you think of Kat? I have to be honest with you. Um, I'm not going to, you know, flat out and say I completely disagree with everything because, quite honestly, my, my involvement with her is different than yours. Okay. Um, over the years that I've dealt with her, I've known at times that she was pro Walter, and you know I thought you know she drank the Kool Aid, and then there's times when she says she sees Walter for what he really is. Now when I deal with her as of late, she seems to be of the opinion that Walter is a sham artist, which is fine because that's that's what he is. But uh, there was a time when it was difficult to deal with her because of her pro Walter position. Um, I don't want to say it's a pro TG position because I was always pro TG. I to this day I, I enjoy TG as a concept, but Walter I no longer support. I can't. And you know there was a time when Cat and I disagreed because of her stance on Walter, right. and specifically because of her stance on Walter. She basically saw the man as you know someone who can do no wrong, and uh, there is no counter argument that you can make to support that Walter is such a great person and he can do no wrong and he's infallible. I mean, Walter is, I know, I'm not perfect myself. All my Walter, idiot friends feel the same way about him. They keep supporting him. Even people that I love like brothers, they really believe that Walter, Billy, and all these people are all legit people. Todd, it's sick. It's Walter, sick. Walter is just as, he's actually among the worst because people refer to Walter and they hear it now and the patron saint of video gaming, which I think is a complete overstatement. Walter is no saint, he's definitely no patron saint, and as far as patron saint of video gaming, let's be honest, he created a scoreboard. That's it. Walter did not, you know, invent sliced bread. He created a scoreboard. Nothing more, nothing less. He's no patron saint of gaming, he is not the father of electronic gaming. He is not the father of electronic gaming competition or the father of esports. That is a complete overstatement. But Walter will never stay in an interview. Well, that's not the case. People will say all these little accolades about him, and he just sits in the limelight and eats it all up. He soaks it all in. He gets invited to interview after interview. He shows up, he goes into his little speeches, and people look at him like he's like this, uh, you know, person to be revered. He's been getting he's not. He's been getting very he's angry. He's been getting very angry, violently angry at people lately. Keep in mind, that's what everybody has in common. Todd, Billy, Isaiah, and other people, even Joel. They all want to harm us and go after us and saying that we're all evil and toxic, including Kat and Patrick, because they don't 
like to hear or can't handle the truth. It's absolutely disgusting. Robert, was there anything else that you wanted to cover in this podcast? We are now almost an hour and 40 minutes in, and it's all recorded, by the way. Everything's good. Well, well to be honest with you, um, you know, being that I have you know, scores with TG going back to the 80s, and I you know, verified a lot of scores that are still in TG right now, you know, it does um, hurt me to know that a lot of scores are in jeopardy of being removed because of changing policies, scores that I know are good, but potentially going to get yanked at some point because somebody wants to see proof positive in front of them, and quite honestly, proof positive does not exist, but for the right reasons, not the wrong reasons. That bothers me. Um, equally troubling is over the years, I have come to grips with the fact that some of the decisions that I made and others within my staff made while I was a TG staffer were quite honestly um, either completely incorrect or should have been made better. Um, that it's it's tough to hear that, but it's it's a fact. There are some things that we did and said that shouldn't have been done. Um, it's, now, I'm not going to say that TG was supposed to be a learning experience. Assumedly, you came in, you knew what you were doing. But the reality is, is that there is no one person, even to this day, that knows what they're doing for every single instance. So, you know, we did the best that we could with the resources and experience that we had. And to that extent, we tried. That's the best way to put it. We tried. Do you, but um... to be lambasted for trying... And to say, well, you guys should have, could have, would have done this, that's easy to say in the here and now. And it's quite honestly, it's frustrating because in some respects, it's like backseat driving well, 10 years after the fact. Well, let me ask you this. Um, I'm going to make a closing statement. You let me know if there's anything else you want to cover. If not, I'm going to let you do a closing statement because I have a big closing statement to make that's going to surprise you and a lot of people. So go ahead. All right, well, closing statement for starters, uh, Rudy. Um, thanks again for taking uh, nearly two hours to sit with me and to interview. I mean, not sit with me in present, but you're sitting on your end, I'm over here. Um, thanks for spending the time and to discuss a number of issues. And to reiterate, you know, you and I over the years, we don't see eye to eye on everything. And even some of what was said in the last two hours, you know, not entirely we see eye to eye on everything. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of common ground that we have in terms of things that have happened and things that are happening that we have dispute with and that we believe should be done better or quite honestly, not at all. And right. um, I don't know if we're ever going to see the incarnation of TG that we personally like because everyone has their own idea of what it should be. But in all honesty, Jace and his staff they're trying. I, mean, I, I wish that certain things they would kind of, I don't want to say try harder on, but get done faster. They're trying for whatever benefits but, them in their pockets, not right. really so much for the gamers. But, you know, that aside, um, I wish there's certain key points that we made that would be enacted sooner rather than later, because until these little issues are resolved, they're going to be a thorn in people's sides, and especially being a former staffer, it pains me to see that things that uh, I'd like to see changed are still not changed or things that are currently being done that I think should be done differently. Well, I'm no longer in a position to make that happen. I'm simply one of a chorus of voices that is saying, well, here's what we think. But, you know, I don't honestly know when TG is going to be 100% what I like. There's a lot of elements of it right now that I do like, and there's one or two that I don't. And uh, for the most part, it serves its purpose, but it admittedly doesn't serve its purpose equally to everyone. No. Um, okay. When I make my closing statement too, Robert, I also want you to respond if needed. Um, you know, I want to thank Robert too. We went through a lot of technical difficulty to make this happen for you folks tonight. And Robert, I appreciate it. It's been about a week trying to get everything to go. And, um, you know, like you said, we don't see eye to eye, but we saw eye to eye on a lot of things. Um, you know, I still always feel to this day that gamers should get paid a certain amount of money. 
you may not feel that same way, but I remember you iterating one time that there was a possibility of that happening years before my time, which is funny that you brought that up one time in a personal conversation. And um, I, you know, it, it, this has been rough. Um, I never, and I, I don't regret retiring. I'm glad that I'm out of it altogether. I left not because obviously of anything other than a collection of all of the above issues with everybody from trolls scam artists, liars, stalkers, everything, and of course, cheating, cheaters. Um, but in my closing statement to Jace Hall, David Hawksett, and Twin Galaxies, if you folks are not going to do what we're asking of you nowadays, and to remove the proper people from their scores and from the database and from gaming completely, and you're not going to restore you know, democracy to the entire site, including equal treatment to all gamers, regardless of money being exchanged or not. I kindly ask you to remove my name and all my scores from your database. You are not worthy of having Rudy J. Foray, the console player of the century, on your site at all. I mean that from the bottom of my heart and nothing will be lost because my games and scores will never go away, no matter whether they're on your site or in a Guinness book. You guys have done nothing for the original gamers like myself and others, including Robert Merzik. You have created what they call a witch hunt with all these score challenges. Yes, a lot of them are valid, but also you're not taking them as serious as you should. And when I get my certificates out of storage, I will be burning them live on YouTube. So if you want to ban me for life, remove all my scores, go right ahead. And by the way, Jace, if you ain't got the guts to expose those private archives then you're not being fully transparent. Robert, thank you. Is there anything else you want to add? Yeah, I mentioned earlier in the interview um, about uniformity and uniformly applying, for instance, the uh, ban tactic, the score removals. And I would like to point out, this came up during the um, Billy discussion. I wanted to point out that, um, like you yourself, your scores have been... Um, I think your scores are still there, but you're banned at a social level. Uh, there were several scores removed only because of TG SAP. Despite the scores are still in existence and the right. uh, videos are available, that's the only yeah. reason they were but, but there are gamers like Billy and Todd whose scores have been removed uh, completely. Right. But there's one gamer who is a recognized cheater, and it's well documented, and his scores are still in the TG database to this day. Not the score in question, but all the other subsequent scores. Um, apparently, it's possible for you to apologize for cheating and then get all subsequent scores included in the TG database if your name is Steve Sanders. Yeah, good point. If I was uh, Jace, uh, and again, this is his decision, I would consider removing all of Steve Sanders' scores. Yep. Granted, he did his current scores after he apologized for Donkey Kong, the three million points on Donkey Kong he apologized yep. for, which is complete BS. But bottom line is, um, I don't understand why he was allowed to submit scores again. I don't get it. And that's why all of them need to be removed, including Patrick Scott Patterson, Melissa Patterson, Morning Dove. Anybody that colluded or was cohabiting with somebody like that, refereeing. Yeah, that, I, I mentioned uh, that they should also look at, for example, uh, the, you, know, you said the Kelly Fluent situation. Yep. Um, I, I can tell you for a fact uh, that there was a post-TG uh, event. I think it was... Um, Tom Duncan and Troy Whalen, by the way, yeah. too. Yeah. May 2007, my first TG event after leaving, leaving TG. Um, I was helping... Gary Vincent do the fun spot scoring for the event. And there was roughly 2,200 plus scores that were submitted for the event. Uh, total scores, not unique scores. And in the two days that followed that event, I had to triple check all the scores. I found out that there was a scoring entry, you know, made that was incorrect, resulting in a change of Tom Vitava and uh, Jason Cram being first versus second place. I found that out, but I did that on my own, 2,200 plus scores. But my point is, is that during the event, there were 16 referees, 15 or 16 referees from TG there, including uh, Dennis Weaver, Patterson, Kelly Fluin. And what I remember, and it's posted on the internet, during the course of the three and a half day event, these 15 or 16 referees 
took down a cumulative 60 or 65 scores, I think it was around 65, of which 30 or so were scores that they themselves did, or in the case of Kelly Flew and his girlfriend. So effectively, they spent their entire time there representing TG, and they only took down between them roughly 30 to 35 scores from other gamers. That's 15 referees over three days taking down 30 to 35 scores. That is an absolute disgrace and compared with the fact that I triple checked 2,200 scores over two days on my own. Yep. Total disgrace. It is a disgrace. All these people are disgraces. And like I said, Patrick Scott Patterson and Melissa Patterson need to also be removed. And if Jace doesn't do that also, because that's one of the biggest issues in all of the archives, Patrick Scott Patterson made his whole life about me for days, hours, months on end, both in the forums and the private archives. And Jace so far has done nothing. So again... Well, at, minimum, at minimum, Melissa Patterson scores. She's not even a gamer. Don't no, of course, she she's, of course not. Of course she's not. April Simmons and Morning Doug Mahoney, those scores, get rid of them. They were all entered by boyfriends and or spouses. Get rid of them. Yep. Total conflict of interest and collusion. Yep. Get rid of them. Yep. Um, so, once again, I'm Rudy J. for a Council Player Century, and you are... Robert Mucek, former TG referee, chief referee. Thank you for your time, Robert. Thank you, Rudy, and you have a good night. Yeah.